Hey, and welcome back. This is episode 7 of our multiplayer chat series, and in this episode we're going to be implementing uh, chat commands or channel commands. Uh, so these commands are a simple slash command that you type into the chat, the chat box, and it will allow you to send a message to the channel that you specify without having to go through the UI and click on each channel button to switch channels. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. We'll open up our chat box widget, and this is the only widget we'll be modifying today, so it's a pretty easy episode for us. Um, let's go ahead and create a new function in here, and we'll call this function parse message. And let's go ahead and make it private and make it appear, and we will give it a single input, and we'll call this message and the type will be of text and let's go ahead and create two outputs and the first output would be channel and its type will be the channel enum and the second uh, parameter or the second output will be the channel message of type text okay let's move that out of the way for now so what this message is going to do is it's going to return a channel that the message belongs to and it'll return the uh, message that the user typed in without the channel command so it parses that out and then that way in our structure over here we don't have to have any parsing logic in the event graph because it's contained within this parse message function so let's uh, go ahead and uh, right click the message input right here and we'll promote to local variable and we'll just call this the message but let's change the type to a string and then connect up the message with uh, or connect up the message input with that local variable and it'll automatically convert the text to a string for us and next we're going to create for now it's going to be a blank function until we fill it in we'll call this one message has command and it should have two inputs and it should have two outputs so the first input will be message and it'll be of type string and the second input will be the channel command which will be of type string as well and the first output will be a boolean called channel command found make it a bool and the second output will be the message out and that will be of type string uh, let's make it private and peer um, the category, we can go ahead and give it a category of uh, message parsing and same thing with the parse message. We'll just assign that to message parsing, compile and save. Okay, so let's go ahead and drag the message has command function here and we'll plug in the message right here let's bring this back up here and for this one I'm going to do a slash trade command so this command will allow them to send a message to the trade channel without having to click on the channel button in the chat box and then let's add a branch hold B left click connect up those booleans, connect up this exe the execution pin like that and then what we need to do is if the message here has if it uh, has a slash trade command at the start of it then we need to actually let's just use this one we need to return and we'll manually set the channel value here to trade 
and plug in the message out to the message or to the channel message return and it should automatically convert the string to a text for us and let's go ahead and give this a comment so check message has trade command and we can actually copy this paste it down here and take the false execution pin and plug it in right there and we'll give this one a comment of local change the output enum to local and change the channel command to slash local and copy this one more time like that plug in the false execution pin change this to slash global change the enum to global and we need one more just go ahead and copy that paste that down here and no channel command specified use current channel so let's go ahead and delete message has command we will also delete the branch and then we'll grab the false plug it in into the return node directly and then plug in the message into this convert like that and then grab the current channel class variable enum and plug that in right there so if they didn't specify chat command, we'll just use the current channel that they selected last in the chat box with the mouse. Compile and save. Let's double check. Local, local, global, global. You can update that comment. Trade, trade, trade. Okay, everything. Doesn't look like I missed anything. So now let's go ahead and go into our message has command. Move this out of the way. And we need to, let's go ahead and promote message to a local variable and we'll just call this the message. And promote channel command to a local and we'll call this the command plug up those execution pins bring that down okay so with this one we need to get the message and we need to call starts with and the end prefix will be the command and it should ignore case and then let's add a boolean uh, branch and let's go ahead and add a return node here and set this to true and then we need to do a little bit of string parsing so let's uh, grab the command and get it and then let's call length to get the number of characters the command is like that and then we'll grab the message as well get it bring this down a little bit and on the message we're going to call get substring and this part we will be parsing out the command out of the message and then we'll plug in the length of the command to the start index so that way if the um, actually I can show you this uh, in a notepad if it'll help clear things up so if the string was trade my trade channel it will get the number of characters right here for the command which is uh, six and then when we get the substring of this string we're going to start uh, the program will skip over this and start right here and grab the remaining and leave out the command 
So let's uh, get the message one more time. Get it, and we'll call length. And then what we need to do is we need to drag off the length and do minus. So integer minus integer. Plug in the length of the command. And then plug the result into the length here. We'll move this down a little bit. Okay, so we get the original message with the command and the message, and we get a substring of it where the substring starts right after the command portion, and then we get the length of the overall message minus the length of the command, and then we take that and then that's the how many characters we actually chop out. So again, it's going to get the length of the command which is 6 and then it will start the substring from there and then we need to get the length of the message we don't want to just put in the overall message length because then you know it it's gonna overflow past the end of the string which probably wouldn't return anything it'll it'll it might just run fine but for good measure we subtract or we subtract the length of the command and then we result with this, including that space at the front. Okay, so let's move this up a little bit. So if message has the specified channel command, otherwise it does not. So we'll add a return node and we'll set that to false and we will return the message. message doesn't have the specified channel command okay compile and save and we can delete this return node we can actually move these in a little bit closer okay Compile and save, go back to parse message, everything is connected up here. So now our last step is to just modify the onclicked button send message. So this is pretty easy. What we will do is we're going to actually bring this over here. And then we're not going to pass in the return value into the text trim. Let's move these out of the way. What we will call though is we will call our parse message function and take the contents of the multi-line text box, pass it into parse message, and then take the channel message here, pass it into the trim, so that way that space that might be there at the beginning of the, the string, if there is a command, it'll be trimmed out. Um, and then we need to take the channel, plug it in here, get rid of that, and I believe that's it. So let's go ahead and clean this up really quick, and then we will test this out. Okay, let's go ahead and compile and save, and let's uh, launch this and check it out. So. So by default, global is already selected. If I do slash trade my trade message, there's nothing there because we're not in a chat region. And if I do, let's say I'm on the trade and I say slash global, my global message, can see that it was added over here. So now if I go oh, if I go into this region I can do slash trade my trade message and it uh, added the trade message. Nothing is in local. Let's take this player, 
and I'll also go into the same region. Nothing is in local. I can see the trade message. Let's go into this map region. And I'll try slash local my local message. And it's there. And let's see. I'll go to the global over here and type in trade. Looking to trade some stone. And it's added here. So, like I said, that was a pretty easy episode. Everything was in the chat box blueprint this time. We didn't have to put anything anywhere else. So that's the end of this episode. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share. And in our next episode, I'm not quite sure what we're going to do, but um, I think it'll be fun. So I'll uh, see you guys next time.